Hello, friends. I'm Kathy Rhodes, and I'm so excited for you to join me today on this podcast episode. We're going to think differently about our end of year routine. I have invited my friend Antoinette Griffin to join me on today's episode and share with you an idea of how to be very intentional and purposeful with what you're doing here to, to, to end this year. As we move into a new year, it's not the new year yet. We're not done with 2022. So take the challenge that we're going to recommend today and have fun with it. Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited for today's episode because my friend Antoinette Griffin is with me today. Antoinette is my coach. I talk often about my coach and I firmly believe everybody deserves a coach, including coaches. So Antoinette, thank you for joining us today and sharing. Antoinette is a deep thinker. And when she shares some of these little, not little, these are huge activities that can really change your, your mindset and change your approach to certain parts of your life. I, I grab a hold of them every time. So Antoinette, I'm very excited that you get to share with us today one of your tools that you like to use to prepare for the end of the year and, and going into the next year. Thank you, <laughs> Kathy. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. So let's jump right in and share with us this tool that I know you've used in the past and you're using again this year. So, so talk to us, define it for us. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate the opportunity to share this and I cannot take credit for this. Um, this was something that one of our mentors in the Maxwell leadership team actually did a teaching call on this and it was a number of years ago. It was like over five years ago, but it was one of those things that I thought, you know, this sounds really simple, but really powerful. And so I decided to, to start doing it. And so I would love to tell you that I have done it every year since I heard that teaching on it and I have not. Um, but when I do do it and I do it correctly, um, it makes a big difference. And that is something called a 60 day challenge. And I know, um, Kathy, that we're already well into November. Um, but hey, that doesn't mean that it's too late and you have to wait till next year. Um, but it's really a matter of um, refining those things that you want to do in those last 60 days of the year. That's it in a nutshell. Um, and there's a lot more to it, but, but that's basically the umbrella of what it is. Okay. So you just mentioned a bit ago that, you know, in, in years past, you haven't done it every year, uh, but when you do it correctly, it's powerful. So, so what are the rules? What, well, how, how do you do this correctly? Yeah, so my rules, and they didn't really talk about this when whenever I learned about it, they just, it was basically, that was it, was, you know, what, what things do you want to accomplish before the end of the year? So for me, I went back and looked at, you know, my New Year's resolutions or goals at the beginning of the year, the things that I haven't done, and the things that in the end of December or the first part of January, when I'm reviewing the my goals for the year for 2022, and I go, oh my gosh, I really wish that I would have accomplished that. Well, some of those things can be accomplished quickly. I've just procrastinated or they've been low priorities or they haven't been top of mind. So it's a matter of during this reflection time of the year um, in November and December when things tend to either slow down for a lot of us or change for a lot of us. Change meaning our schedules change due to holidays, due to other people having other priorities. It's not just a typical, you know, two months out of the year, they really are different. And that is coming up with a list of things to accomplish. As far as things that make it successful, the rules for me are, it can't be any more than 10 things because 10 is a lot. Um, but it's 10, no more than 10 things that I really want to accomplish by December 31st. Um, so that's one of the rules. Another rule is that I have to keep it visible because if, if, and I've been guilty of this before, if I don't keep it visible, 
then like my goals back last January, it may be put in a drawer somewhere, or it may be put in an electronic file on my computer and I forget about it. So it has to be visible. And for me, that means beside my computer on a printed out piece of paper that I am looking at and I'm constantly reviewing. And another part of it is accountability. Um, so having somebody to hold me accountable for how am I doing on that 60 day challenge? I love that. I'm glad you said no more than 10 things, because when we talked about this originally at the end of October, I started a post-it note. Here's my post-it note. And I had, I had only three things to start with, but throughout the last few weeks, I've been, I've been thinking of other things. So now I'm up to six and, and I got thinking this morning, gosh, should I have total of 10 or is it okay to have less than 10? Yeah. You know, like, like you said, we make up the rules. We can, we can do whatever we want, but yet I love hearing what's worked and, and why it's worked. So over the years, when you have chosen to do this, what are the benefits that you found? Well, one of the things that John Maxwell teaches in the 21 Laws of Leadership is the law of the big mo, which is called the law of momentum. And he talks about how momentum is a leader's greatest friend, because once you start getting momentum, then you start to be successful in other things. You know, he talks about like, for instance, you know, the football teams that are doing really, really well, they've got that momentum. And once they get on that winning streak, then what generally happens? They get that mindset of a winner. And so the same thing with the 60 day challenge is you start feeling like you're getting momentum towards the end of the year when for so many of us, unless you're in a in an industry that picks up like retail or, or you know certain industries that that's your peak time of year, for most of us, our business and our lives are slowing down. So it's a way that we start getting momentum, but not just busyness that doesn't mean anything, but really momentum as far as the things that we really want to accomplish. And so it helps us going into January when we come up with these new goals to be able to go, I've already got momentum and I'm already seeing what it can do. That is, that's such a good point because in years past, when I have not done this, it is this slow decline and rest that we, we need. We definitely need rest. However, I don't just turn it on January 1st, <laughs> you know, and start the new year. It, it takes time to get going again. So hopefully I'm avoiding this, you know, too slowing, too much of slowing down. And I just keep my goals going. I like that. That's such a good point. I never considered the momentum thing that's really happening. That's beautiful. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Like I said, not only in what our actions are, but in our mindset as well, which is so important. Right. Right. Okay. So why would you recommend that somebody embrace this activity in, in a crazy time of year, especially if this is the season that their business does increase? Why, what's the why here that you would really encourage? Well, you know, how many times have we, like I said, started January with all of these great aspirations and then we go back and look at those goals at the end of the year and we're going, you know what, <laughs> maybe I accomplished a couple of them, but I could have done a whole lot more. So it's really that way of, of chunking it down and going, okay, maybe you can't accomplish all of those goals that you had at the beginning of the year, but what are some that you can, by the end of the year, say, okay, I've done this. It's it's that whole sense of accomplishment. Because like I said, it's not only that you have accomplished it, but it's that mindset. And because it's a small number, and just because I said 10, that may sound huge. Like you said, you don't have 10, which is certainly fine. I don't have 10 for this year. But but if you if you're able to say, okay, it's this small number, say for instance, maybe it's three things, um, you're you're able to be laser focused on that, even when you are busy, if you're laser focused on those three things you will find the time and the energy to make progress. 
um, as long as you're laser focused and as long as it's visible and you're being accountable to somebody. Well, wow, that really just spoke to me because this time of year does get busier with the holiday baking or Christmas shopping or wrapping or gifting or it becomes busy like that. But it is amazing how much more I can get done when I do have a focus. So even though my mind is going everywhere and then within the next eight weeks, I'm taking a major international trip. My daughter's graduating from college. My son's getting married after the weekend after Thanksgiving, right? So let's add, let's add just more extremely exciting stuff. But yet this focus is exactly what I need. So I love how you just said that, that this is the tool that will help me when I've got little pockets of time rather than scrolling TikTok or social media or staring at my emails, I'm getting something done that I want to get done. I love that. Yeah. And I like what you said, Kathy, it's that you want to get done. So, you know, you want to put things on your list that, you know, is not, are not these like chores that you're going, oh my gosh, I'm dreading this, but something that, that really is driving you and you've just been putting it, putting it off. Um, yes. And I know, wow, I didn't even know you were that busy. You are going to be busy in December. It's going to be fun and exciting and crazy and that's okay. But let's also be purposeful and intentional, right? Because business still goes on. <laughs> exactly. And not just business, but life goals too. You know, I mean, some of mine have nothing to do with business, but it's just things that I want to accomplish personally by the end of the year. Now, in years past, when you've done this activity, was there ever a task that you added to the the original note that you didn't do? You didn't get done by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, now, one I know one year um, I and it was that year right after I had um, had started doing it and I kept it visible and I crossed off all of those things and I still have that list not visible anymore, but it's in a drawer somewhere. But I love to, to, you know, to be able to, when I'm going through old things, to be able to pull out that list and go, oh my gosh, look at this. I accomplished every single one of these things. And I was so proud of myself. You know, sometimes, um, sometimes I'm not even when it's visible, but I am certainly making a lot more progress than I would if I weren't making the list or I weren't keeping it visible or I was not accountable to somebody else. Yeah, so true. It works. A simple task, a simple post-it note, a simple thought that you write down will, will happen. Yeah. Okay, last question for you. Since this is the podcast, Thinking Differently, uh, I, I just love thinking differently. I love challenging our thoughts. How has this activity really caused you to think differently? Um, it caught, thanks for asking that, Kathy. I think it it causes me to think differently and going, you know, we really can accomplish more than we think we can. And, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, when we start off at the beginning of the year, we're going, oh my gosh, I have all year to be able to do this. And, and I'm, I tend to not be a person who procrastinates. So I tend to go into the year thinking, well, you know, of course I'm going to accomplish all these things because, you know, I set realistic goals. I am not a procrastinator. I'm I'm self-disciplined for the most part. I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty self-disciplined. Um, but then I go and I look at the still, even despite all of those things, what I haven't accomplished. And so it gives me, like I said, that just concrete, I'm going to chunk it down and I'm going to really focus. And so it helps me to think differently going, you know, things can really be accomplished as long as they're chunked down to just a small number and and more uh, easily attainable steps, and I'm staying laser focused on it. Mm, that's wonderful. I have like visions in my mind of how I can create little little check boxes of of progress. You know, I might not get it all done in a week but I can get a piece of it done. So that'll help, <laughs> that'll help motivate me or just give me that crossing off feeling that is always accomplishing. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. It's certainly self-satisfaction, that's for sure. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, 
Antoinette, thank you, because I, I was, I've been writing notes. I've been writing, you know, my brain is starting to really get creative of, of probably more items I should be adding to my 60 day or 45 day challenge. <laughs> so yeah. And even though it's not, it's less than 60 days now, still it's, you know, so, Hey, if, if you need be, make it a 30 day challenge. It's still the whole principle behind it. You may not want to make 10 things if it's a 30 day challenge, but you know, what is it that given your time left this year that you can really stay focused on? You know, something else too, that I think I, I, been focused and intentional to add is it is going to be crazy season and business is crazy. Personal is crazy, but yet how am I going to enjoy the season? For me, it's like watching Hallmark movies, <laughs> give myself one a week. Do you have anything like that, that you're adding to your list to, to embrace the wonderful season that we're in? Oh, you know, that's good. And thank you, Kathy, because I tend to be more of this task oriented person, you know, productivity, let's get stuff done. And, um, and that's good. You're, you're helping me think differently right now to go, you know, I should probably, I shouldn't, should, I should not say I should probably, I need to add since I, especially since I don't have 10 items, I need to add one or two that are more, Hey, this is, I'm going to do for enjoyment. So thank you. You just caused me to think differently. My pleasure. I appreciate that. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I and do. And that was not scripted for everybody. That's totally not scripted. <laughs> right. I'm more so being like uh not selfish, but just self-focused that I want I want like fun. Now when I look at my list, it, these are fun and I'm really excited to accomplish these, but I still want like maybe a massage by the end of the year or <laughs> maybe a trip. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Yeah. Good. Something like Good that. Good idea. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, like I said, my mind is going. I got I got more ideas to write down and to perfect and to get started on. So thank you for helping us all think differently. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Hey, friends, what do you think? What do you think of this idea of a 60-day challenge or maybe... Maybe it'll be a 45 day challenge. <laughs> Go find a post-it note or something. You know, if you're driving, find a napkin to write on and start brainstorming those things that you want to get done here by the end of the year. I love hearing from all of you. So please share with me what, what are you going to do? What's what's on your list? Are you taking this challenge? And then at the end of the year, you know, how did it go for you? Was it truly momentum driving that 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 took you? to complete the new year the way that you really want to complete it. Thank you. I hope this is challenging you to think differently. I hope that it's helping you be more efficient with your time these next 45 days and definitely more empowered. We'll see you next time next week on the next episode.